Hello. Hello. Hi, is this Lola and Blair? Yeah, it is. It says here that you believe that one of your roommates slept with Lola's dad. <laughs> and at first yeah. when I read that, I was like, okay, this is, you know, maybe a little bit of, uh, you know, how can you be so sure? But then it also says here that that Lola found evidence on her dad's phone to make her believe this. So, I mean, let's, let's, let's hear, um, let's, let's hear this story. Lo am I talking to Lola or Blair? All right. Yeah. Talking to both of us here. I put you on speaker. So Almost I'm Lola. Put me, put me, um, who, cause I hear one of you guys is faint in the background and one of you guys is pretty front and center. Let's put Lola front and center have her hold the phone and blair can can hover over it because i feel like this All right. is 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 lola's story to tell at least in the beginning yes okay so yeah this is a little bit of a doozy i admit so right. um tell me what's going on lola okay so i recently transferred to a college and this is my first time having roommates. So I have um, five other roommates. Well, technically sweet mates, but I room with one person. And so the person that I room with, Blair, I, you know, I told her the entire story because one of our other sweet mates, Olivia, she, uh, it's a little complicated. I don't know what exactly happened to trigger everything. Like maybe like I was totally nice to her. I don't think I did anything bad. To well, her. hold on, hold I on, mean, hold on. I want to, I want to, I want to uh, skip to sort of the. I want to skip to what we know. Okay, so so it's you. How many people live in this in this place? Okay, so. I live with Blair, and then there is two rooms um, that are single rooms. So one person just lives in that room, and then there's another room at the end, and that has two other people in it. And we share a bathroom, a shower, and okay, a okay. Well, unit. Uh, hold on. so 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 Olivia is the one that you believe slept yeah. with your dad. Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so what is it that makes you... You said you found something on your dad's phone to make you believe that Olivia slept with him. What is it that you found on his phone that made you believe that? So it was Olivia's phone. I um, So I was on her phone because um, I think I was just on Snapchat or something. I asked to borrow her phone for... You know, I forgot, but... So I was on her phone. That's just it. And all of a sudden, like, a message pops up, and it's, like, heart emojis or something. But, you know, I click on it because, you know what, I'll admit, I'm a little nosy. So I click on it, right? And the contact name is something, like, baby or, like, heart emojis, you know, something cheesy and corny, whatever. Sure, sure. And... And, you know, I click on it. I'm like, who is this guy? Maybe I know him. So I click on it and I recognize the number. And it's my dad's number. Mm. And so I'm like, okay, something. I'm like, obviously something's up. So I scroll through the messages. And I'm saying, like, there's a lot of, like, I miss you can't wait to see you next week uh, heart emojis some little inappropriate comments and so i mean olivia and my dad they've met before because you know for moving my dad you know came up to the dorm introduced himself to my roommates um but i didn't notice anything weird i don't know how they got each other's numbers don't know that's the only thing that, you know, I can think of that, you know, they met on move-in day to really, like, you know, exchange numbers. 
Um, maybe he came up once after that, like, um, but I didn't see them interact at all. I don't know. Just something is fishy. And I could wear all of this. But we did put our phone numbers up just because we all admit it's just like on the first day. We all decided we should put each other's phone numbers up on. We have like a little like mini marker board on our fridge. So we each mm. all did that. So you so think honestly, maybe so. Like so we think we think maybe Lola's dad got Olivia's number from this whiteboard where everyone has their phone numbers. Up. Yeah, maybe he like noticed her and was attracted to her, and then okay, decided so. To so 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 we have so you so 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 if what you're saying is correct you have evidence not necessarily evidence that they have met up and they have slept together and all this and all that but you have evidence that they are in uh you know a form of flirtatious romantic sexual contact i i didn't i was dumb i didn't take screenshots with my phone I, well, like, forgetting about well, forgetting about screenshots. We're not talking about hard evidence here. I'm just saying you've seen it for yourself. Yeah, I've seen it for myself. Like my ex. okay. So, I so have you me. talked to your dad about this? I have not. I don't know how I would talk to him or my roommate. Like it, you know. I don't know too much about my parents' marriage. I, um, you know, I. I admit I don't really have like the best relationship with them, so I don't really know what's going on. Like I don't know, maybe they're open marriage. I don't know. And um, so I'm just really like confused as to like what to do now. Like what hmm. do I say something to my roommate, to my dad, to my mom? Do I just keep my mouth shut? Like, are your, are your parents married? About, they are married, but I don't know if they're like, you know, really like thinking about getting a divorce because I huh, don't think okay. my dad is that kind of man, really. Well, listen, I mean, <laughs> how are you? Okay, so in, in response to you not knowing what to do about this, how do you feel about the situation as a whole? Like, what are your thoughts about your dad sleeping with your roommate? How does that make you feel? What do you think about it? You know, I mean, what's your what's your take on it? How does it make you feel? What do you think about it. For, for, before, before we before we think about what you should do. I honestly don't feel good about this. I really tried not to think about it at all because it's just. It's so, like, such a big issue. I don't know, like, how to feel. Like, obviously, this is wrong. Obviously, something needs to be said or happened. Or I don't know, but I... Obviously, this is not an ideal situation. I don't know. Hmm. You said your, you said your relationship with your with your parents is already not uh uh you're not super close with them yeah i i'm not super close with them you know it's just it's not that you know we hate each other it's just not like a good relationship you know i just felt like you know i was just living with them and they're just not really not really there for me so, you know, I was just kind of happy do, to get out of the house. Do you want do you want to get involved with this? No, I don't. I feel like okay. a good idea is just to like forget it ever happened. Okay. And um you know, but I feel like the right thing is to say something. Hmm. So I don't know if I should be selfish. Hmm. And not say anything, hmm. or like possibly ruin like my relationship with my roommate and with my family. <laughs> I I don't think you need to worry about ruining your relationship with uh with your roommates. <laughs> you know, I think she's sort of made her own bed, but um, it's interesting because you very you you and the reason why I was asking you about your thoughts 
is because you you appear not to be reacting very viscerally to this. And when I ask you if you want to get involved with this, you need your your gut reaction to say no. You don't want to get involved with this, but you feel like you have a moral obligation to. And I don't know. I'm not going to this 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 phone call will end without me telling you what to do because I don't really have an opinion on what you should do. But I don't know. I don't know if I don't know um what your moral obligation is in this uh or if you have any obligation at all. But I don't know. I hope I hope that talking about it at least got you to like sort of consider your feelings about it and your feelings about it not just in terms of you know some sort of objective moral standard that you're trying to hold yourself against and also just to your own personal perspective on the situation and you know sort of using all of that to inform uh, whether or not you decide to get involved Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I've actually known this, or I found the message a couple weeks ago, and immediately I talked to Blair about it, and, you know, we've been keeping, like, an eye on Olivia, and I haven't, like, Here's what I will say, here's, he will be, he will be, he will be, he will be sort of my last, yeah. uh, thoughts about this is you say you're keeping an eye on Olivia you're kind of turning it into some kind of spy game and it's like the only thing I I, I if, if if I had to give some sort of advice here I would say to you figure out what you know you're, you're trying to figure out what to do mm-hmm. stick to a plan right because if you don't want to get involved if you really don't want to get involved you feel like it's just gonna like mentally fuck with you to get involved then don't get involved. And if you do want to get involved and you feel like you should get involved, you feel like you're morally obligated to get involved, whatever your reason is, then get involved. But sitting on the fence about it doesn't feel like the right move to me, at least. But I'm also happy to hear that it seems like you've got a good friend to talk about all this stuff with that um, is closer to the situation. So, you know, cherish Aww, each other's you, yeah. uh, nasty hood and whatnot. But uh, thank you for sharing, uh, Lola and Blair, and good luck to you guys. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. I'll update you if anything happens. Hello? Hello. Is this Travis? Yeah, this is Travis. Hi, Gek. How's your night going? Uh, um, How's my night going? Um, Was that a bird? It's going pretty Mine is going pretty good. Um, Travis, it says here that uh, you're trying to figure out whether or not you're a furry. Yes, that is correct. And I figured, like, I don't really know any furries. Like, none of my friends are furries. Or if they are, I don't know it. So you're kind of like the next best option I have, because I, I believe you're a man wearing a gecko suit. I, I've, I've also heard you're a real gecko. I'm getting kind of, like, conflicting reports. Um, but I figure, you know, I don't know if you're a furry, but I figure you might have some unique perspectives for me. Yeah, well, I, it's funny you ask this, because I, I have an interesting relationship with this, where, like, I don't identify with, uh, I don't identify myself as a furry. Uh, I don't take any part in any kind uh, in the furry culture or the furry community. Um, I, I really have nothing to do with furries, but it is undeniable that I am a person wearing an animal costume right now. So there really isn't all that much of a difference between me and them. I, I cannot create any wall of artificial... Um, uh, difference between us. But enough about me. Yeah, well, I, you think you might be a furry. Why do you think you might be a furry? I think it's kind of like a, a lot of little things over time that have been like building on each other. Um, like I've always mm-hmm. enjoyed, you know, like media and content that involves anthro animals, but I never really yeah. like more than the average person, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a lot of little things adding up that I'm like, now I'm like, could I be a furry? Am I a furry? And I'm like trying to kind of interrogate that question, you know, like I would feel mm-hmm. more at peace if I could be like definitively yes or, you know, maybe not. Um, but I've, mm-hmm. I've got, you know, I could I could elaborate on that, that timeline if that helps. Mm. Okay, so you think 
because you watch a lot of media and content with uh, anthropomorphic animals that you might be a furry. Well, here's what we here's what we have to do first. And we could look at this from many different perspectives. One is this this whole thing of am I a furry or am I not? Why do you need to label yourself? And it's a legitimate question. You might have a legitimate desire to label yourself because from what I gain about the furry community, the pro of being a part of the furry community is that you're a part of a community of people who like the same thing that you like. Same as a guy wearing a, 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 a L.A. Dodgers jersey and going to the games and hanging out with other sports fans. It's all it's all the same thing. Right? Just identifying with something and being a part of a community of other people that identify with that thing. Why? Is that is that what's attractive to you? Yeah, yeah. That identification? Yeah, so I think... Being part of the community? I think it's uh, it's kind of like, you know, I feel like I'm riding this train, or I realize I'm on this train, and I, you know, maybe I woke up from a nap, I don't have the itinerary, I don't know what stop I was going to get off on, you know? And I, so I don't know if I was trying to, like, get up on the stop where I am, you know, like I consume a lot of this content um, and that's cool. Or like if I could be getting off on a stop or like, should I go to some conventions? Should I buy a fursuit? You know, like, I don't think the identity is important to me, but as I've been considering this, you know, I've been like watching some documentaries and like trying to wrap my head around the subculture. And I'm like, it does seem kind of fun. And furries seem kind of like some rad people, you know, like maybe I would jive with that. But I think I'm kind of just wondering like, how deep should I dive here? You know, like, should I, should I go to a furry convention when the pandemic's less of a thing, you know, see if I'm actually into that? Um, I don't know. I also, you know, I just think it's, I, I think it's just, it's a fun, it's fun strand to follow. Mm-hmm. Well, look, I see no doubt. Da- I mean, I see no downside to if you are curious, if you think that, you might jive with other people into the subculture, then go to the conventions, watch, join the subreddits, get involved in the community. I don't, I don't, the only, the only downside, it's not a real downside, is if, let me ask you, are you afraid? Are you afraid of identifying as a furry? Are you afraid of being judged or ridiculed? I mean, I wouldn't say I'm afraid of it, but it's definitely like something I think about because I think okay. you know, like part of the question of like, you know, am I a furry? Am I not? Is I've realized like some of the stuff that stirred up these questions is more like me having conversations with people who are like shitting on furries. And then I realize I have like a knee jerk reaction to kind of like defend furries or be like, yeah. you know, like, what are you saying here? Um, and I'm already queer. So like I'm already used to kind of just like not really giving a fuck what normies think I should or shouldn't be into. And I think maybe, sure, like, that totally. knee-jerk reaction is partly, like, you know, siding with the underdogs. Um, totally. But it is kind of weird because it's, like, as far as, you know, the extent of being queer, it's, like, most of my friends are not weird about that at all. But, like, some of my good friends are weird about the furry shit, you know? It's, like, I don't know if you've seen Beastars, right? It's kind of a furry anime. Um, it's a good fucking show. And I know some people who are like, oh, I'm not going to watch that because it's like a furry show. And I'm like, it doesn't like I I know people who are like afraid to watch content that is fucking good because they want to distance themselves from what could be considered a furry thing. And it's like a weird uh, it's a weird thing for me because like I haven't actually caught a lot of shit for being queer. But I'm like, oh, I have friends that would throw shade if I was a furry. So it's it's kind of strange. Mm. Well, I mean. Travis, Travis, I think that you, I mean, you sound like a guy who uh, is pretty good at not caring what other people think about him. And I think you should take that shit to the bank. That's a good life to live. That's a good headspace to be in. And God damn it, go to one of these furry conventions. I see no downside. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. I think I will. When I'm not going to get COVID again. <laughs> See, that's, that's the other thing is I don't actually have a persona and I don't know, like, you know, so I feel like I've kind of got my foot in the door, you know, but I'm not all the way there. And I don't, I don't think I'm like necessarily trying to like decide, I, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, I have like a key to me of like a raccoon, um, 
but I don't a think raccoon? That's All right, look, you know, because here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm not a furry. I don't think I'm an. I actually, I, I would consider going to convention just to like do some interviews or something. That'd be fun. But um, objectively, running around in a big old raccoon costume sounds kind of fun. And oh, I it is think fun. Yeah. that you should not um, reprive yourself of that experience if it is an experience that you um, wish to partake in. Yeah. No, I think, yeah, I think you're right. And also, yeah, someone else asked you in the past, uh, someone's asked you before if you go into furry conventions and that's you. I think you should do that. Yeah, I would consider it just to do like some streams or something. I think that'd be pretty fun, but, um,. We'll see. I'll see you at the next one, Oliver. Take care. No, oh, crap. I called you Oliver. Why'd I yep, call you yep. Oliver? I haven't talked to a different Oliver. Mm. All right. We'll, we'll cut that. You know, the screen got right, my name wrong, too, so it's all good. It's just the thing tonight. Have a good night. Here's the thing. It, the, all these things, they all, all these things, they all serve the same function. Intramural flag football, Dungeons and Dragons, cryptocurrency, furries, Marvel Comics, lacrosse, uh, spelling bees. They're they're all they all do the same. Bowling groups. It's all the same. It's all the same thing. It's all the same thing. It's just people who like the same thing, getting together, and talking about it and being about it, and it's fine. What what bothers is me all the time is that people will like rip on individual things when the underlying theme of all of these groups is the same. It's just different ways to bring people together. Hello. Hello. Uh, hi, is this Baby Bear? Yes, this is Baby Bear. Baby Bear, it says here that you have been exploring hypnosis with your partner. Yes. Yeah. What kind so, of um, I have. Well, first of all, um, it's only been an idea. So, I've actually been exploring pup space with my partner. Um, I feel like I resonate um, with being a pup. I've come to find that out within the last like six months or so. And so with that, sometimes I don't want to think and I don't want to be an adult and I just want to be a pup. So along with that, my boyfriend um, had suggested uh, hypnosis um, to kind of help me put me more into that space. And um, so I, I'm kind of like nervous to kind of delve into it. I'm not entirely sure why. But, um, I don't even, I, I, yeah, I'm just, I'm just kind of nervous. So you are not interested in, so, so you are interested in the abandonment for at least a momentary bit of time of yes. your human senses and your human brain mm -hmm. into a dog-like state via hypnosis. Yes. Mm -hmm. and Cause I already kind of like do it. Like my character characteristics kind of line up with it already. Like part of my personality. And I feel like, um, with hypnosis that would just take it like a step further. And, um, I listened to this podcast the other day and this guy is named Case Kenny. And uh, he said something that really stuck with me. And it said, never stop chasing your curiosity. And I felt that was more powerful than don't ever stop chasing your dreams. Because that can be like really scary for people and like um, very almost like broad. Um, so and when he said that, I was like, well, if I'm curious about it, I should just do it. But at the same time, I just I feel like not necessarily have reservations. I just I don't know what I'm stepping into. And what is appealing to you about becoming a dog? Um, being carefree, uh, getting out of overthinking all the time, and um, 
I deal with bipolar. Um, so like when I get into my low, it can last a lot longer than when I'm on my highs. Um, and I feel like kind of escaping, not even necessarily escaping, but just kind of flipping that switch and being just the more carefree, carefree, playful, don't really care what people think about me. Um, if I want to wag my tail, wiggle my butt, I want to be able to do that and to show that I'm happy, um, you know, and just kind of almost like a, a healthier escapism than um, kind of derailing into my negative thoughts or that kind of negative space. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to lie to you. I absolutely see where you're coming <laughs> from. When I look at dogs, they absolutely seem... <laughs> significantly happier than humans very present very in the moment mm -hmm. not thinking about the past yes. not thinking about the future merely focused on the life that they are living at the current second that they are living it and i can see what is attractive about that headspace mm -hmm. tell me what is the process of this hypnosis look like? Um, well, I'm a beginner, so I don't really know fully all the details yet or um, would really know how to like confidently or be able to explain it exactly maybe how it would be. Because I feel like if I, I don't want to give any misinformation, but it's different for everybody. Um, I feel like for me, Personally, it would be maybe like a word that would trigger, like, let's say, hi, pup, right? And that would, like, take me from being, because my name is Brianna, being Brianna to being pup. Um, and then just kind of being in that space for a while where I'm just a pup. Like, not even necessarily like a dog that's just kind of chill, but like just, just a cute little fun, carefree pup. Um, and then being in that space for a while with my partner, of course, um, and because, uh, you know, he accepts me for that and he's helped me to explore that more. Um, so that's, I don't know if I'm just kind of rambling uh, and didn't really answer your question, but... Um, no, so you're so you're um, trying to that's kind of hypnotize what we, yourself to a point where your partner can say a phrase and it will bring you into this mm -hmm. state of mind. So then I have another question. Are you afraid yeah. of the possibility that you will be permanently hypnotized into a pup and that you will lose Brianna? Um kind of um Let's see, like I do have some reservations um, in, in that sense, like, and I know that my partner wouldn't do this because I completely trust him, but at the same time, I kind of have like, just like this little thought in the back of my head, like, because I've seen different movies and shows and stuff where like people get put under hypnosis, maybe not even knowing it or they do and they think it's for different, that it, their, the intention behind it is different and then being, um, um, uh, manipulated or tricked into being hypnotized to be doing other things that weren't consented. Um, I think that's kind of where it... But, um, but I'm not talking about the idea that you yeah. get hypnotized into something else. I'm talking about the idea that you get hypnotized mm -hmm. into being a dog, but mm -hmm. your partner is unable to hypnotize you back into being... You said your name was... You said your name was Brianna? Yeah. Uh, uh, unable into um, being yourself, and so you are permanently a dog. How? I mean, how does that sound to you? Um, I mean, it wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing, but if I think about it from the perspective of, you know, I have to think about my adult responsibilities as well, and like, like my job and you know there's like other those are the things that I have to take care of in my life but if I was to a point where I was I had financial freedom and I had enough money to just be comfortable for the rest of my life which I plan on doing uh, at some point in time working towards that for sure 
uh, to where I would just be able to chill at home, then maybe it wouldn't be uh, necessarily a bad thing. But I don't know if I would want to be in that space permanently. Um, Cause I, I want to have that sense of being back as Brianna because I want to be able to keep learning and growing. I don't want that to be the only thing that um, I am. Does that make sense? I agree with you that I also one day would love to be rich enough to be a dog. <laughs> that would be great. Thank you very much for calling, Brianna. Good luck to you. Thank you. That actually sounds like a pretty good life. Hello. Hello. How's it going? Uh, I'm a gecko. Can- I'm a banana. All right. I have a story that kind of scarred me. This was told me about a year ago. I I promise this is not pranking. I promise this is a true story. I'm looking in the chat. Somebody said this was a prank. I promise this is a 100% true story. Banana, Banana, do me a favor. While while we're on the phone phone together, do me a favor. Try not to uh, look at the chat. Okay, okay, okay. I got you. I got you. Beautiful. I'm sorry about um, that. No, no worries, man. What's um what's up? What's uh what did you want to say? Okay, so I was going to my buddy's house to go pick up some stuff and well uh he asked if he could go get some McDonalds with his girlfriend since they didn't have a car. So, you know, I, I left my stuff there because this is gonna be a quick ride. We're gonna go back, come back, you know, I'll get my stuff and go back home. Well, we get back to his, where the place he was staying, and his roommate's girlfriend locked the door because she was going to Walmart. Well, they didn't have a way in, and my stuff was inside, so I couldn't wait. Or, I mean, I, I had to wait to get my stuff. And so we were, you know, just telling stories. Well, he told me about how he had an ex-girlfriend that he got pregnant, and they didn't have the money to afford for an abortion. So he told me about he grabbed the, uh, they had to use a coat hanger, and he said that he could feel the uh, coat hanger going up, and he could feel it scrambling the baby. And that shit pretty, like, kind of fucked me up, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I'm all about abortions, because that's free, you know, free rights to everybody, but, like, how you gonna tell somebody that shit? Hmm. This was your, this was something that happened to your friend? Yeah, no, he did that. Like he did that himself. Like he told me he could feel the, the like the coat hanger. You know, you straighten the coat the coat hanger out. He, he said he could feel it penetrate the fetus, and he could feel it scrambling and shit. Wow. I promise this is not a joke, but like this shit is kind of fucked up. So you said that this this well, so interesting. So you say that this story scarred you. Yeah, I mean, if the story, if if the the third party account of it scarred you, I I uh, cannot imagine how how your friend felt. I mean, I, you're right about that, but he did he he did it for a reason, so he must have been okay with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. It says but here. Like, it says here. Um, no, go ahead. You 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 were you were you were going to say something. No, you can go ahead. I was, was going to say something ahead. stupid. No, say the stupid thing. I kind of don't want to because it's stupid. It says here that uh, you have a story about getting locked out of your friend's house. Is this the same story, or are these two different stories? Uh, that's the same story. Because we got locked out of uh, his buddy's house because I had to wait on, wait to get my stuff that was inside of there. But I mean, my life's kind of, kind of all whack. But I'm not gonna lie. If you you want to hear some other stories, sure. Why do you say that your life is whack? Um. So, so how, how much can I go with saying on here? Um, 
I mean, look, as long as you're not saying anything like, you know, well, what, 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 I mean, not, like, tell, tell me, tell me, tell me the arena the, the, of, of what you would like to say. The, the FBI is not going to come raid my house if I tell you my life right now, will they? What exact, well, give, give me the arena. What, what area, what topic of, um, um, I, I, I make some stuff. I ain't gonna lie. I, I kind of, uh, I, I, I beat around the bush and I kind of talk some people over. But okay. they all still buy my shit. Okay, you beat so around the like, bush. You say you make some stuff and you and you fuck some people over. In, in, in what way and in, in whatever amount of detail you're comfortable providing do you, do you fuck people over? Well, um... Do you do you know anything about like psychedelics? Not a whole lot. Well, you know how like the uh, there's like LSDs like all those tiny papers. Yep. Well, you can buy those tiny papers on Amazon by like a sheet for like twenty five dollars. Well, instead of making LSD, there's something called LSA. It's so simple to make. Well, I found a way to get it onto the papers and gives you like a like a like a decent trip and so i sell it really cheap but it's really cheap to make so i'd be like flipping my money and when you sell it do you pass it off as if it is lsd yeah i sell it as lsd what does lsa mean uh I honestly cannot tell you that. I feel like lysergic acid, but don't take me up on that. I'm pretty sure it's not lysergic acid. You get you you get it from the seed. The seeds are legal. The process to make it is literally the seeds and water. Okay, and when you say you fuck people over, do people come back to you upset with you about this? Uh, no, because uh, if you get actual LSD, you can sell it for fifteen a hit where I'm at. So I sell these for five dollars a hit, or three hundred for a hundred of them. Okay. So like, I, I just pass it off as like really bad LSD. Okay. And. But um, but uh, you can go on YouTube right now and learn how to make it, and you can go on there and learn how to make DMT too. Which I don't know if you know what DMT is. Mm-hmm. So, tell me, you say your life is... Ah, uh, uh, fuck, I forget if I'm putting words in your mouth, but you said your life is fucked up. Yeah, I think this is pretty fucked up, what I do. Okay, so... I'm not... I, what? I was going to say, I'm not really happy with what I do. Okay. I'm sorry for cutting you off. No, 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 it's fine. So you're not happy with what you do. Is is there anything that you could think of that, that you would rather be doing? Well, I already work uh, 40 hours a week, so this is sort of like a side thing. And I just enjoy doing it. But I know it's, like, bad. Bro, oh, bro, bro, what? Okay, okay, I just now remember what happened. What happened to me, like two months ago you will not believe this i thought i was going to jail for life i'm can i can i tell the story yeah but i i want to i want to real quick because i don't want to lose this you said that you're not happy with what you do um but yet you say you enjoy doing it so you just like well i I, because i'm I'm trying i'm trying a lot of hard of my it hurts my family that's 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 one real big reason why I hate doing this. Okay, so it hurts your family, um, but you say that you like doing it, but it's something that has pros and cons to it in your eyes. Yes, like I don't okay, think anybody are, should do this. Okay, what are the what are the pros for you? Making money? I uh, pretty much just making money. That's all about. I'll do it. Mm-hmm. And in what ways does it hurt your family? Um, they're just 
against it. They don't like anything about doing it. They've been sober for about 30 years. And I just feel like it's bad that I'm doing that shit. Have you... I'm just curious. Have you made any attempt at all to stop doing this? Um, about 2018, I got robbed of two ounces from a guy that I knew from like the second grade. I moved away from that school in like 10th grade. And I figured, you know, he wouldn't fuck me over. Well, he actually fucked me over. And well, that kind of made me stop for a minute. But I sort of just got back into it. Cause you know I, I, so, I I'm not gonna lie, I so weed too. Mm-hmm. Have you ever gone to any kind of like actual counselor type of person who you think might be able to help you? To you. <laughs> I am. I am. I, I don't know if I've uh, disclaimed this to you, but I am not an actual... I I am nothing more than um, a man in a gecko costume. But if you Give do me have... Give a therapy gecko. But if you do have a genuine desire to quit, I would, as always, recommend that you seek some form of legitimate, legitimate help. What was the thing that you wanted to tell me that happened to you two months ago? Um, Me and my buddies, we all left our house because they had to go to the gas station and go get wraps. Well, we were just going to get wraps, so we didn't carry nothing on us. Well, as soon as we leave out their house, go down the street, there's a cop sitting right across the street. So, you know, we turn right. As soon as we get down a little down the road, the cop pulls out. Well, we get down to our gas station. You know, the cop blue lights us, so we get pulled over. Well, because he knows the people in the car, and he said that he smelled marijuana, he said that he could... Uh, he told me to get out of the car, and I got out. I was straight with him. I told him, you can search the car. There's nothing in there. And so I let him search the car. They didn't find nothing. Well, I'm, I had jail tabs the jail LSD and I had paper LSD on me right there like real stuff not fake well I shit you not when they searched that car another cop came they searched that car again they found it he brought that up pointed it right in my face he was like what are these I told him they were stamps you lick them and you put them on there and he looked at them they're like these are stamps I've never seen stamps like this before he was like I'm gonna have to go do a little more research on these so he takes them you know goes back to his car i'm still standing there thinking oh man i'm about to go to fucking jail for life because one tab is apparently like a uh manslaughter charge or something or like like conspiracy against the government and i had uh eight of them so i was like oh fuck bro i'm gone but uh, he comes he tells me to go over there he was like these aren't acid stamps are they because i looked up uh, stamps, and that's the slang word for acid. I was like, no, they're just stamps. You look them and put them on the envelope. He was like, he was like, okay, I'm gonna take your word on that. I'm gonna take it to the uh, lab and test them. If anything comes back, we're gonna come and get you. I was like, they're just stamps. Well, let alone he he let me go. I like, dude, I shit my pants. He let me go. I sat back in my car. The, literally, the paper tabs were sitting on my front seat. I got it back in my car. They were just sitting right there. As soon as I opened my door, I was like, what the fuck? How'd they not even take those? But they took my jail tabs. That's it. <laughs> so, yeah, that was a ramble. I'm sorry. They just flat out believed that they were stamps? Yeah, I guess so. But I'm oh, okay. Okay, there's some worse to it. The uh, the cop was sort of acting like buddy buddy to me. I ain't gonna lie, because uh, I'm like a I'm just okay. I'm just gonna say that. And well, I asked the uh, as soon as that cop said these are acid stamps, I told him 
I was like, no, what, what is acid? He was like, oh, that's a bad drug, but I'm pretty sure that guy's tried it. He pointed at this other cop inside his car, and that cop started laughing. Hmm. So I'm pretty sure they knew what it was. They took the shit, and they had a good night. Really? So they, oh, so they ended up That's they confiscated. So they, so, they, so, they, so they did confiscate it from you. Yeah. And they just but they didn't, like, wrap it up or anything. They just pretty much, they were holding it. Like, they didn't have it in, like, no fucking evidence bag or nothing. The cop was like, you ain't going to have to pay nothing tonight. Like, you're good to go. You all can leave. Like, they were, like, really, like, some, like really buddy-buddy cops. They ain't going to lie. And they found that shit. Listen, banana, 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 banana. I, you know, look, What's before up? we go, What's up? Um, I mean, look, thank you for sharing um, with us again. I appreciate that you feel comfortable enough uh, to share this this stuff with us and everything. Um, I am concerned, though, because you, you sound like, um, you know, you got very, if, if, I don't know, I don't know where you live, I don't know what the laws are, whatever, whatever, but if what you are telling me is true and you had enough acid on, on your person to send you to jail forever, um, you got really lucky. Very lucky. You got I predict, you know, you I don't, you don't there was three you other people you. in my car. That shit was horrible for me. Because when he brought that shit right up in my face, Dude, I, I literally put my hands behind my back like I was in handcuffs. And he, like, I thought they were like, what the fuck? Dude, but then he was like, what are these? I told him they were just dance. Yeah, he literally, listen, like, listen, 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 started listen, talking banana, to me banana. normal. Banana, banana, you know, okay, look. You, you yeah, got really yes, lucky. Yes, you, yes, know, you know you got really lucky. Okay. And again, I'm yeah. not a real counselor. I'm an insane man in a gecko costume on the internet. But... And I don't have any, like, advice for you necessarily, but I do hope that you take... How long ago did this happen? That happened, like, two months ago. That happened two, two or months three ago. months and ago. I, and, and, are you, and are you still are you still selling? Yes. But I stay out of that area. I try, I try to. Because I got pulled over three times... And like well, listen, listen, maybe listen, two, listen. maybe in a, like a week and a half span, and they didn't give me no tickets except one time. Well, banana, uh, listen again. This is this is definitely um, you know above my pay grade to advise you as as to what to do. But just as a as an entity of some kind that would like to see you uh, avoid avoid go into jail forever and avoid causing hurt to your family i do genuinely hope that you find a a better alternative to making money than doing this cuz dude you know how lucky you got and i don't want you to be in that position again right cuz hey you might not get so lucky again Before I mean, we, I you're mean, right about that. The ass is just paper. Like, most cops don't even know what that shit is. Can I, can I tell one more story? <laughs> Before, I don't, oh, well, listen, I know, it, look, we're, 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 we're definitely, uh, you know, I know you have a lot of stories about this, but I, 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 I really want like you to leave at least this call with like, fuck man, the sentiment that like, whatever it is, I don't know you, man. I've only been talking to you for twenty minutes, but I hope that uh, whatever it is that keeps you living this pretty dangerous lifestyle, that you find a way to to get out of it. Because, again, I'm a broken record here, but you know you got very lucky. And uh, I assume that that doing what you do, uh, I would have to assume you live in consistent anxiety every single day of um, getting caught. I really don't. I, I don't. You don't? No. 
getting getting caught for what? Uh, say what? What in particular? Like you think the police are gonna come and just raid my house? I don't know, man. I don't know. But I I I think that. I don't know, man. I'm just a Gakko guy on the computer, but uh, I can only wish that uh, that you do whatever's best for you, Banana. Look, I, I, can I give, like, one piece of advice? Cops do not search the gas canisters. You know, like, where you click the button, and where you, like, pop the shit, right? You don't even have, like... Sorry, not, hold on, I'm stumbling over my words. Just wherever, like, the, the area opens up, you just stick your weed right there. Don't, dude, they never search that gas area. Banana, thank you for calling, and uh, good luck to you. Uh, hopefully I can meet you again, sir. Hi. Uh, hello? hello? Hi. Hi, is this Mr. Gecko? This is a Gecko. What is your name? Alexis. Alexis, what's going yes. on with you today in the world? Ah, uh, you know, I mean, the hardships of being an adult. Everything's so expensive. I'm quite sorry, but my mom's very excited. Yes, it does. my mom's excited. She loves you, too. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, do you, you seem like you have a good relationship with your mom. Um, on and off, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why? On, where, uh, where is it today? Are we on today? We're on today. You know, everything is going good. I got groceries and stuff, so the house is taken care of. It's all pretty good. So it says <laughs> here that you met a guy on a sugar daddy website, mm -hmm. but it hasn't been going mm -hmm. well. Why? Why has that not been going well? Um. Well, you know, I was forthcoming about like hey i'm struggling paying rent it's hard for my mom to keep a job so i live in the bay area everything is just super expensive and he knows that and i kind of talked with him today being like i'm kind of just living off credit and when i went to the grocery store it was just like oh my god is my credit card gonna work today and my max out and i'm like man you know it's just it's really hard and he's like oh well you know what you should like go to a food bank i'm sure there's a lot of good ones around i'm like well, you know what the deal is. We met on season arrangements, so what? <laughs> Why are you telling me to go to a food bank? So, what is the is the goal here? Are you so have you have you met up with this guy in person before? Yeah, I met with him like two times, and you know he's a very nice, sweet dude. He's you know he's like only thirty. I'm twenty two, and. You know, he's really nice, and he's like, yeah, I definitely want to help you out and stuff like that. And, you know, he filled up my car for me when I went to go meet him. Uh, just went on, like, a couple dates and stuff. And I told him, like, hey, you know, when you're comfortable, I'm cool to come to your house and stuff. But, you know, I'm like, I feel like he's not going to come through, and I don't want to be rude or pushy and be all like, hey, give me money right now. But I'm like, I need money. <laughs> Please. This see, I I don't know what to tell. I don't know necessarily the etiquette of the mm -hmm. sugar daddy, sugar baby universe here. Uh, um, but I will, say, I will say, I will say, I will say, if this guy that you met on this, if 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 your whole thing is that you want to find a sugar daddy. And uh, you're willing to, and again, I don't know what sort of things are bringing in the big bucks. I don't know how much you have to do. I don't know what you're personally comfortable doing. I don't know any of the, I, I don't know the universe super well. But if your goal is to find a guy who's going to give you a bunch of money and this guy isn't it, why, you know, of, of the whatever thousands of guys on seeking arrangements, why are you stuck with this guy why don't you go find more guys if if this is in fact the way that you you know that you want to do it i am a little bit scared and it's like this guy it's very promising just because we click really well mm -hmm. but it's just like i'm very scared because it's like you know a lot of people come in and be all like you know if you, you need me with me right now and have sex and i'll give you a hundred dollars or whatever and i'm kind of like Ugh. 
And like, this was the first guy that was actually like a very nice, normal, decent person, you know. He was saying, you know, I do want to spoil you. How about I give you like $300 every time we like meet up for a date and stuff like that and see if we get along. And, you know, I want to spoil you with gifts. And I'm like, cool. We went on two dates. You know, he paid for the meal. He sold up my car. And he's like, yeah, you know, I definitely want to help you. Um, let's go on a few more dates. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, please, I kind of, you know, can you help me, please? <laughs> this is, I'm, I'm, uh, why are you afraid to ask him for money if i mean look you you sought an arrangement as did he mm -hmm. i feel like the the writing is on the wall as to sort of the arrangement which is um you sort of, again i don't know the universe that well so this is just me sort of faking this up from thin air but the arrangement being sought is that he gives you money and you in turn spend spend romantic and, I guess, implied sexual time with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty much. So, I'm just, uh, I'm scared so to, like, turn you, him off. And he'd be like, yeah. So are you afraid to... to... to reinforce the... sort of... grounds of the arrangement by saying, hey, listen, you know, I'll go out on a date with you, but... This ain't Tinder. This is seeking arrangements. You gotta pay me for this. Yeah, I'm just scared to be... I'm not very confrontational, you know. I'm a cancer, mm -hmm. so it's very hard for me to just be like, Hey, we know what the deal is. Well, I mean, yeah. look, and by the way, maybe, you know, maybe you ask a more um, seasoned sugar baby about the best way to go about it, but... Um, you know, you might have to get a little bit of confrontational and just, uh, it's not even, it's not a confrontation. Don't look at it as a confrontation, but, uh, <laughs> look, you know, you got to go out there. You got to lay out the, uh, lay out again, the grounds of the arrangement. Let me bring up one other thing, by the way, before we, um, and, and again, I, I you know, I think, I think that any way that you could make money is, is you know, I, I'm not going to say it's not a legitimate way, but like, I, have you considered other ways of making money? If, if this is like, you know, because you, 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 you sound like you have safety concerns, which are very legitimate concerns. Um, and, you know, you sound like you're, I, 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 I don't know, I'm not going to put words in your head, but you sound like you don't want to have sex with people for money. Have you thought about other ways that you could make money uh, outside of seeking arrangements? Yeah, I have a full time job. I work at Tesla, and it's like you know the pay is good. It's just I try to work overtime as much as I can, and it's just it's killing me. But I'm not gonna yeah. go just get another part time job because overtime I'd probably be making like thirty to forty bucks an hour if I worked, you know, sixty seventy hours a week. You know, uh, it's just like I don't know. I just need like. Just a little bit of that help for just a little bit longer until my mom can hold a job. And I'm fine with my cap sex. It's it's fine, but I'm so I'm sorry I laughed, but I was just I I, I feel like if you work at I, I I'm I feel like uh, so you work at Tesla. Yeah. Full time. Fortune five hundred company. Yeah, yeah. Full time job. Mm-hmm. So wh where are your money struggles? Lying is it that um, you're trying to support your mom and you don't make enough money to to support both you and her? Where where is the what what's what's the sort of the big money issue that you're trying to solve? Yeah, it's just I'm paying all the bills by myself. We moved into this place recently, and my mom kind of just she can't hold a job. She kind of just walks off and then doesn't want to like stay or she doesn't want to go back. And then it's kind of just all falls on me and. I had a boyfriend who worked at Tesla, and he helped me out a little bit, but things just got really, really bad between us, so I had to kind of say, like, we're done, and now it's just kind of all on me, and I'm like, oh gosh, okay, well, I need to do something that's just kind of quick, easy money, to just make sure rent's paid on time, to make sure we can have groceries, and all of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, look, if you've explored other ways of trying to make a little bit of side hustle money and you've decided that this is, is the right one for you, then, um, you know, don't be afraid to to uh, be confrontational 
um, as to the the nature. Because like at the end of the day, seeking arrangements. The sh- at the end of the day, the sugar baby, sugar daddy arrangement is a business transaction. And if you know, I am a a freelance anything. If I'm a freelance photographer or a freelance artist or a freelance girlfriend, uh, I should really have no problem with uh, asking people to pay their invoices. And that's just a part of being a freelancer, whatever it is you are freelancing. So uh, if this is the side hustle that you have decided to to pursue, uh, I invite you to look at this as an opportunity to do one of the necessary parts of freelancing, which is asking to get paid. Yeah, I think, you know, it seems silly, but talking to you actually helps make me feel better. Good, I'm glad to hear that. Um, give your best to, uh, I was about to say give your best to my mom, but you're not, you don't know my mom. <laughs> um, give. Well, my I do give her my best. To your mom, and uh, thank you for calling. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Hello, is this Lee? Yes, this is Lee. Lee, it says here that you have an obsession with lawnmowers. You currently have six of them. Yes. But you want more. Yes, I do want more. Mm. And what is driving this obsession? Well, honestly... Like, when you sit there and you work on these lawnmowers, and once you get them running, and you can just ride around on them, and it's, it's like a reward in itself. And you can line them up, and you can take pictures of them. You know, they're a lot cheaper than, than cars. They're easier to get a hold of. You know what I'm I saying? I was going to say, no, 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 I, I, now that you've explained it and you've sort of analogized it to the types of people who have, like, garages and garages of cars and the big car people, it actually makes a lot of sense why you would be obsessed with lawnmowers because not everybody has the financial tools to keep cars and cars of, to keep garages and garages of, of, of you know, collectible cars, but, you know, collecting lawnmowers, being a lawnmower enthusiast, a lot more affordable of a hobby with a very similar sort of idea behind it. You know, there's engines, there's models, there's all the sort of same stuff to geek out over as there is in the car world. Exactly. And you see, like, people have told me that I have a problem. Like, I just get too many of them. I don't see it that way. Like, because, like, literally, like, every two weeks, I'll either, like, just get another one or just trade one of the ones I currently have for a different one. Like, I'm always on the search for a new type of lawnmower I haven't had before. Hmm. And... Is there a particular... And the, the crazy part is... Speaks to you the most? Yes. The 1960s Sears Customs are my favorite. They like just, that. they hit so different. Well, because they are like the simplest. Like you just, you just pull the starter and it's got like one little belt that turns the whole thing. And it's just such a simple machine, but yet it's so capable. Like, mm. They can do so much. Like it's so much more than just a lawnmower. You know what I'm saying? Mm, absolutely, absolutely. How many lawnmowers and the cr- throughout the course of your life do you hope to own? Oh, like from the rest of my life? Mm-hmm. Ooh. When will you? Oh man, I don't see myself stopping before a hundred. Until you gaze upon them. And go, that is enough. Well, I'd say at one time, I'd say I could I could handle 15 at one time. But all the different kinds I would like to have, I don't see myself stopping before 100 or so, you know? And the crazy part is, 
I don't even like mowing my grass. I just like the mowers themselves. So you don't even yeah. mow your lawn with them? Well, I have like one or two that I do mow my lawn with. I just don't like mowing the lawn. I just like mm. the lawn mower themselves. Mm. Do you like to ride the mowers? Yes. I will actually like get on one of my lawn mowers and I'll go check the cows. I'll go get my mail. I'm next weekend I'm planning on driving it all the way to the grocery store just just because I can, you know. Do they have parking for lawnmowers? Parking like, for lawnmowers? Um, not specific parking, but the way I look at it, like, what are they going to tell me to do? Just move the lawnmower? I mean, once it's there, I don't really think anybody will do anything about it. That's true. Yeah, because, like, there'll be stuff, like, right down the road that I could easily just drive my vehicle to. But I'll prefer to take the lawnmower just because there's a different feel to it. Hmm. Do you know anyone else who's obsessed with lawnmowers or are you alone in this hobby? hobby? Well, I actually, I have a lawnmower group of friends. Now, they don't have as many as I do, but we do have like this little group where we'll go ride lawnmowers together. Like a sort of <laughs> lawnmower gang. Yeah, it's it's called Mower Mafia, and we'll get together and we'll just ride the lawnmowers, and then we'll talk about them. Hmm. Yeah. Do you guys ever go to war with other lawnmower clubs? Well, we haven't come across any other ones yet. We're like we're like a pack of wolves, just. Running the area, the lawnmower area, you know? Right, running your turf. Yeah, yeah, turf. That's a good analogy since it's lawnmowers. What did you say your name was? Lee. Thank you for calling, Lee. Yeah, you have a nice night, Mr. Gay. Hello, Forrest. Hey, what's up? Forrest, it says here that you wanted to talk about your sugar addiction. Yeah, yeah, we could definitely talk about that. I was just, um, I I finally finished all the podcasts, and uh, I remember that being one of the older episodes, I think, and I also have a sugar addiction, and though, Mm. yeah, don't really... (laughs) The learning to take better care of myself. Sad to report, sad to report that although... You may have heard me complain about having a sugar addiction in an older episode of the podcast. That today, as of this recording, on January 31st, on 2022, I still have quite the addiction to sugar. What's your game? What's your stuff? What's your poison? What's your vice? Butterfingers, uh, right now, jelly beans, what are you doing? Oh, dude. What's killing you? Dude, uh, I do I do a Sonic Blast with Butterfingers and Oreos. You get both. And it's a dynamite combination, dude. You ever had, um, for during Halloween, Baskin Robbins will do this f- flavor of Oreo called Oreo Trick or Treat. And it's fucking Oreo cookie with Butterfinger... And Babe Ruth and I think Heath Bar all in one ice cream thing. That sounds heavenly. That sounds fantastic. Hmm. Here's my thing. Tell me if you can relate to this at all. Because I'm going to give you sort of my Mm -hmm. thoughts about my whole thing and then I want to hear yours. Um, I'm so glad we can can talk about this because most of my friends are like pretty like normal people when it comes to like how they eat and stuff and I'm kind of not mm-hmm. I am back and Same. forth yeah. I'm, I'm back and forth mm-hmm. between my life would be a lot better I'd feel better I, I used to care about looking good now I, mm-hmm. I don't I only care about feeling good um, mm-hmm. but I would feel a lot better 
if I ate correctly and I didn't indulge and, uh, you know, did push-ups, blah, 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 whatever. But I also fucking love, I love eating Oreo trick-or-treat ice cream. I love eating food, trying different foods, different candies, mm-hmm. whatever, whatever. There are definitely mm-hmm. lots of times in which I overdo it and it's like totally overindulging. But would my yeah, life be easier sure. if I just continued living the way I lived, but made it an intentional decision? And I was like, all right, I'm not going to beat myself up over this anymore. I'm just going to mm-hmm. live this way unapologetically. And I'm in between those two things where if you're not, if you're going to, you know, eat a bunch of bad shit, but then feel bad about it. Then why are you even doing it? If you're going to do it, you just commit to doing it. You should be like, yeah, mm-hmm. fuck it. I'm eating a Butterfinger breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Fuck it. This is my life. I accept that you'll be happier. Or you just go all in and you go, no, I'm not doing that anymore. And, you know, but it's sitting on the fence like this is what's causing mm-hmm. me the distress. Can you relate to that at all? Yeah, yeah. I can re- relate to that, like, radical acceptance of Baskin Robbins for sure. You know, just... uh yeah, um, I don't know, man. Uh, it's definitely, I feel like for me, it's a combination of a bunch of different things. I think, well, the first thing is, is that like, um, I'm highly distractible. And so oh, yeah. with any food, uh, if, if I just have like a source of it somewhere near me, which is usually the case, I'll just go through the whole fucking thing without realizing, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's kind of, uh, one thing that I know about me, but yeah, uh, what else? It's like the also kind of thing like, where like you'll be like, oh, there's a box of cheeses, yeah. like a whole box, and it'll start going on yeah. before you know it. The whole you, you ate the whole thing. Bro, it's funny you said cheeses. I was literally taking care of my friend's dog, and they had a. Uh, I was like, oh shit! They had a family size thing of cheeses in the cupboard, and yeah. like I'm gonna munch on these. And then over the weekend, I just ate the whole damn thing by myself. I gave, I gave like five cheeses to the dog, mm-hmm. and the rest are for me. I always, yeah. every time there's a situation like that, I always sort of like overestimate what amount mm-hmm. of the box other people have eaten. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You're like, oh, oh man, I didn't eat the whole box. I gave the dog ten cheeses, where really you gave them only five. You know, I do that kind of thing. It's like the whole heap problem where, you know, like you have enough to say it's like a heap of something, but then, you know, eventually it gets smaller and smaller. And then all of a sudden it's just like a few crumbs left over. So then you can't like justify it anymore. You got to find, you got to strike that balance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So have you ever made an attempt to cut out um, or or just in general to eat healthier, live, uh, live better, Mm -hmm. all all that stuff? I've done really well before, actually. Like, um, so I guess I should say I have ADHD, right? Um, but I also have looked a lot into how to kind of work with that and um, have been able to, in the past, tailor my surroundings to make it easier for me to uh, make those decisions. Because a big thing with ADHD is in impulsivity uh and then i also like personally can't i don't have no sense of time or you know kind of talking earlier about the you know just mindlessly snacking a lot of that um but like yeah i would always been like lifting weights ever since high school and then there's a point there where i was like in really great shape you know i was like uh bench pressing like a little bit more than my body weight and like twice my, and I'd squatting like twice my body weight. And yeah, I wasn't like eating sugar at all besides like natural sugar and fruits and stuff, of course. But Mm. yeah. And then I just like, you know, it's this ebb and flow. It's (laughs) like, uh, you know, you flow into the uh, deluge of like garbage food. Right. And then, and you come out after you've had enough and then, you know, you just go back down, but it's just over a long period of time. Yeah. Yeah. Did you 
so you've had multiple periods where you were mm-hmm. like there there wasn't a sort of first half in shape, second half out of shape. It was like a little bit of time in in shape, you know, a little bit of time out of shape, a little bit of time mm-hmm. in, a little time out, like sort of a back and forth mm-hmm. type of thing. Yeah, it's that classic sort of yo yo, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I've always like loved food, and and that's the thing is that you know I go back to it because you know it just tastes so good, and you know I get really into cooking. That's usually what brings me back into it because I like make some homemade cookies or some shit, and I'm like, oh damn, I forgot about these. Mm-hmm. It's that's one of the tough things is that you can't like achieve fitness in the same way that you can achieve mm-hmm. climbing to the top of a mountain. It's like it's an yeah. ever demanding thing to to stay in shape. You know, I've gotten mm-hmm. I'm, yeah. I'm a, li- I, a little bit like you, ebb and flow. I've gotten in shape many times. Mm-hmm. But you really need to have it be a permanent lifestyle change to stay there. Mm-hmm. But uh, we listen. Uh, food. I, I'm like you. I love food, man. And so you know, it's it's mm-hmm. hard to. It's hard to stay in the healthy lifestyle mindset for so long. I mean, you mm-hmm. can do the keto. You can do the whatever. You can do the, the you know, your. Oh, I'm gonna only eat vegetables every Tuesday, whatever your thing is. But if you can't do that for mm-hmm. your entire life, you're eventually going to, you know, balloon back up. Yeah. You're just gonna, you're just gonna die eventually. You know, it's just gonna, you know, um, I think that, uh, you know, you can do it. I think you can have a, a good balance of both. It'll eventually happen. I feel like for the both of us. And, uh, but it, you just gotta, yeah, accept that you're gonna be like somewhere in the middle, you know, and then eventually it'll just like level out there. What'd you say your name was? My name's Forrest. Forrest, I will see you uh, at Pizza Day uh, at Planet Fitness. All right, man. <laughs> you have a good night, my gecko friend. Take care, baby. Hello. Hello, is this Eden? Yes. Hi, Lyle. Hello, Eden. How are you? Oh, I am fan-fucking-tastic now. Uh, Eden, I, Eden, I, I have, here, I, you br- Eden, you brought up two things that you wanted to talk about. One was about your jaw, and the other one was that you said you're having a gender uh-huh. crisis. Now, of those two things, yes, uh, let's let's talk about one or the other. Personally, I'd prefer to talk about the gender issue, but you can pick, really. Sure, let's talk about the gender issue. But is do you have do you have um, pronouns or or an identity of which that you would like us in the chat to to refer to you by at this current moment? Um, right now, we're just going to go for they them pronouns. Beautiful, and like just neutrality. I don't know. So, um, what's, what is this, what is this crisis, Eden? So, um, I, in 2014, um, in 2014, I came out as a trans man, and so I came out as and started transitioning. Real, real, quick, Eden, real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. Before, it, before, am I on like speakerphone or headset or like anything other than you just holding the phone yeah, up you to your mouth? Yeah, let me fix that. Beautiful. Is that better? Much better. Uh, continue. What, what, what were you saying? You said something about 2014. Okay, yeah. So I came out as trans. I came out as a um, trans man, uh, female to male in 2014 and started my transition from there. Um, just so that I can put my headphones right. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, so I've been living my life as a man since for, what is that, almost eight years now? And. Damn, that is almost eight years. Ah. Uh, yeah, May 2014 is when I came out. I'm gonna go. Sorry, I interrupted Sorry. you with my realization of the passage of time. No, you're all good. It's been a, it's been a fat fucking minute. Um, 
And like, okay, so uh, God, okay, so I was engaged to another trans man for a couple of years. And at some point in our relationship, I realized that I don't identify as a man anymore. Mm -hmm. And um, the thing is, is I got top surgery. So I got my breasts removed. I got my name legally changed. I look like a man. I've lived my life as a man for, you know, my entire adult life so far. I'm almost 21. And, you know, I have been since fucking middle school. And I couldn't talk to him about it because he wasn't able to get surgery. He wasn't able to change his name. And he got personally very offended that I could have regrets about these privileges that I was given. Mm. And so, yeah, so he made his, you know, his issues mine. And it just forced me back into the closet, basically. Mm. And so the best that I could get away with without starting a fight at home was coming out as non-binary. So I've been living my best they them life for like eight months, but I'm still not happy. So and you're no, go ahead. I want to let you finish before I, before I chime in. Okay. No worries. Um, but See, it all came to a head this morning. So I started dating a cis man. So I started dating a man who was born with a penis, right? And um, Wait, so you broke up. So you broke up with the other guy that you were seeing. Yeah, yeah, we broke okay. up uh, like six months ago, and okay. um, so I'm dating a new guy now. And I just got a new job. He bought me a pair of work pants from the women's section, and they gave me Kim Possible vibes. I felt like Kim Possible wearing them and it made me fucking sob. I just, I was like, holy shit. But, you know, and I just, it was the sense of gender euphoria that I haven't felt in fucking years. And like, I just realized I want to wear dresses and I want to have long hair and I want to be pretty and I don't want to be his boyfriend. I want to be his fucking girlfriend. And like, mm -hmm. it's just, I spent so long working the transphobia out of my family and working my way into being respected as a man only for all of this to come tumbling down and I want to undo it. And it's just like, oh my, the trauma. I don't want to go through the trauma again, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I don't, I don't know. I've been listening. I started from the very beginning of, you know, what you've uploaded on Spotify and and I, I've, I've met you and I have talked before. Talked um, you and I and my friend Shannon have talked a few months ago in September when yeah, I first got diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. I remember. Yeah. That. You didn't. Yes. Well, so, yeah. so, so I've, listen, I've missed like, you. <laughs> so listen. All right. So, so, so uh, let's see. Okay. So you were born female. You had top surgery yes, sir. in, or you came out in as a as a trans man in 2014. You had your surgery, um, and you lived as a trans man for eight years. You said, "Yeah." And then now, you tried on the Kim Possible pants, and am I am I hearing that you are like, "Oh shit!" Now you want to like. You know, be more more feminine, and you you and you and you're looking to. Here's the thing with all this, by the way, is like maybe maybe mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe there's a little bit of like sunk cost fallacy here, where like oh, you lived as one thing for the, so long, right? Or, and you did all that work to like convince your family. You know, you have to deal. With, you just have to, you just have to deal with a bunch of bullshit for like eight years. Yeah. And so now you're like, well, fuck, I have to deal with all that bullshit, and now I want to go back, and is that, and that's fucking with you? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and I basically, I just want to, like, I just want to move away and start over where nobody knows who the fuck I am, and I can just be me without having to explain the transness, you know? Mm -hmm. But... I just started this job and I don't have any fucking money and like, oh, it's 
so obnoxious? Why did I have to have this realization at seven in the morning, putting on a pair of pants? By the way, okay, li- listen. <laughs> I know you're looking at this, and and by the way, I just want to say, I just want to like disclaim. I want to disclaim this real quick because uh, I I like to disclaim <clears throat> this when I'm dealing with these kinds of issues because I am a cis straight guy, so I can't truly no, empathize with what you're going through, so I just I like to disclaim that up front before I talk about these kind of things, so that people aren't like because, ah, yeah, you know, it's important to disclaim that, but I do feel like it's 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 a, it's just, it's one of those things of like, feeling like, you know it, I think it's a good thing to like change, go back and forth like, that's a strength, it's a strength to like know Oh, this isn't for me. I gotta go back, right? Because if if you truly do feel like you're a woman and you want to go back to living like that, why should the past define whether or not you can do that? Right? Like, like, True. like, why, like, why be chained? And I get it. I get that you're like, fuck. I just went through all that stuff. I lived the eight years, but like you're not, ch- you're not chained to the past, right? I I I I, I mm-hmm. get I get where these feelings are coming from. At least I think it. But yeah, I don't I don't feel like you should be chained to the past. Like, how old are you? Twenty one. Yeah, almost. I turned twenty one. Twenty one. You, you're you're, you're hey, like, anybody you live else until in the eighty. Chat you, and like- well, shit, dude. Like you, you're 21. You have years and years and years ahead of you to go live as a beautiful woman and wear all the dresses you want. And you know why? Why? Why at 21 would you want to be like, well, I've lived this way my whole life, so I have to live the rest of my life this way. I don't know. That is a good point. That's, that's how I feel. Um, that's yeah. That's pretty much what my boyfriend said, but it, it hits different coming from you for some reason. <laughs> I have the um object. I have the I have the uh, the the gecko. You've got that third party, but um, right? No, I mean that's that's how that's how I feel. Is like you know, if you've been living the way that you've lived in the past, it sh- shouldn't have any you know effect on how you live to the future, right? Like whatever, man. Put the Put that chapter behind you, and um, fucking go, go, go live. Go, f- fuck it. Go live. Go, be a woman for a year. Be non-binary for do what. If swipe and sw- do. Who cares? Why are you ever? Beho- you're never beholden to be what you once were, right? You know, right. I don't know. That's how I. True. That's how I feel. I don't know if. I don't know if this was helpful. Again, you know, I'm happy to talk about these things, but I don't like talk about it too much because I'm, um, you know, I can't fully empathize with the situation and not my place and all that. But you know, I hope I hope that was helpful. No, it was. It was, and like I don't know, you were one of the first people that I thought of when it when the whole realization came because. You know, I, I work eight and a half hour days and I listen to your show on Spotify. I started from the very first Spotify episode and I'm just listening from the fucking beginning. You know, I fucking like, I don't know. Every time something I emailed you a couple months ago, every time something big happens, I just want to know what what the fucking Gek thinks. I would, <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. You, I know you're not like a real therapist, but you're a real person and you have good things to say you have good input usually well thank you very much eden uh again wishing you the courage to uh not let the past define you giving you gecko energy and um thank Thank you you. for calling eden you have a good rest of the night cow yes this lyle what's up cow hey lyle so I kind of want to talk today, it seems like the subject has kind of been changing to morality and this kind of fits me. I really haven't told anyone this other than the screener before. Um, I'm going to make it short. And, you know, this is a no-judgment-free zone. So a little background. 
I train people how to fly planes and small engine planes. And normally there's weight limits. Well, I had someone that was critically obese, let's say about 350 pounds. Well, I didn't want to fly them because it's a safety issue. My boss is money hungry. So because of that, I was doing things that I could legally do, like taking out fuel and not being able to complete all the flights I could. Well, one day, he's good enough to go for like a, a check to see his performance. So my boss has got to fly him. Well, they weren't able to complete the whole flight because of his weight. And so the boss sits there and gets a scale out. And it's one of these old medical scales in his office. And they're all standing there. He hops on the scale. They're looking at it, trying to size it up. And I might have put my foot on there to make it exaggerate even more than what he already weighs. So because of that, it shows that he's about right around 400. And our boss tells him, you know, he can't fly anymore. And the kid is heartbroken. But my morality is in question because I've done something wrong. This kid has spent thousands of dollars. But now he's lost like over 100 pounds and is trying to get back into flying. So I also feel partially responsible for his newfound success and for him to further on. And I can't tell anybody or say anything about it. Because I feel so wrong about what I did in that room. And it was just me that knows. So here's what I don't fully... Here's what I kind of want some clarification on is... So this kid was um, too obese to fly safely. Correct. And you said you put a little bit of... You said you, you sort of fucked with the weighing process and put a little bit of extra weight on him. Do you think that had you... I mean, if he was already obese... Did the extra weight that you put on the scale even affect the sort of final decision of whether or not he could fly? You know, and that's that's a good question. I like to think, I tell myself that maybe I wasn't all responsible for it because I did just put my foot on the back. But I had seen him around it's a small town in a grocery store and the cart is full of more two liters than anything I've ever seen and more little Debbie cakes than any actual greens or foods. So maybe he actually did weigh that is what I tell myself at night to sleep better. But I just, I don't know, Gek, and I'm, it, it ate me alive. But again, I still feel partially responsible for his success to lose over 100 pounds and be able to safely return to flying. So why, again, another sort of clarification is why did you put your foot on the scale? Was the intention so that was it like you had the intention to protect him? Was it that you just didn't want to fly in a plane with him because you were afraid? You know, what what was what was the intention behind that? Okay, well, to be completely honest, when I first Please. met him, I was very honest. With, I said, hey, your weight is pretty high. If you want to be a professional pilot one day, like, you're going to have to lose your weight. Well, he found, he found a doctor that says he's good to go, which should have been a red flag. And then I'm having to take out a lot of fuel out of the plane. So instead of doing two to three hour flights, I'm only able to do one hour. And he says he's losing weight and he's drinking water around me, which I think is Sprite. And so I was like, you know what? My boss is money hungry. This kid doesn't want to listen to me. It seems like nobody in the world was listening to me when I'm just trying to be safe. So I was like, I'm going to, if he steps on the scale and he did, I was like, I'm going to put my foot on the back of it. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, this is a classic, like, this is a classic thing of a moral dilemma where you perform an action that you seem to, and I, I'm not here to interpret what is or is not moral, I'm just talking along with you as, as, as you're sort of telling me all this. So you're doing what you consider to be an immoral action by putting your foot down on the scale, and you're doing it with what could be considered a virtuous intention which is trying to keep this guy from being in a plane that crashes to the ground and kills everyone in it yeah but it almost feels like you know we were talking earlier in the show you're talking about you know what is life and who is me and where are we the real me the real question i have is then it kind of drives me to like 
who do I talk to if I can't talk to anyone? Well, in Catholicism, they talk to the priest and they give off their sins and they do a Hail Mary and then they're let go. Where is my redemption in that? And does the priest even feel the type of weight of their sins? Like, how do they go on with their day? Mm. Mm. Are you Are you a Catholic? I am agnostic. Okay, so you feel as though you have a heavy weight to bear uh, with with your own actions and what you consider to be sins, and you're sort of left to your own devices on how to sit with these things. Yeah, and then I just, the worst part is, is when I tell you it's a small town, it's a small town. I don't tell people what I do for a living. I like to say that I teach. And I meet a girl, and she's talking about how she's been on her brother, her little brother, about losing weight. And I'm like, oh, I know what you mean. I, I kind of have a student. I really need to lose weight. And then it turns out that she's actually related to him because she just randomly name dropped him one time. And I get scared because I'm like, oh, my God, I'm now the universe is punishing me because I like this girl. And now I feel like, how am I ever going to overcome doing this to that kid and then just keep this a secret forever? Where's my confession? Mm. Mm. Are you against confessing? And even if you were to, who, who would you confess to? Would you confess to the kid? Are you still working with him? Um, I, I'm at a whole different place. I believe it. I was just toxic and I was more scared of, what if there's someone else like this? Because I could see myself easily doing this again. But to confess to, to him, I would feel more con- comfortable confessing to the girl that's related to him. Because, you know, maybe she can judge me for my character and say, you made, you did the right thing, even though it was wrong. I don't know, guys. I'm just morally confused. And it, it keeps me up. And I can't even tell my friends about it because I'm scared of what they'll think. Hmm. I'll tell you the the sort of thought in my head of like if you need something to do because you seem like you need something to do you have this like restless again armchair gecko therapy but you have this like restless feeling within you that's caused by like you know you feeling like you don't know whether or not you did the right thing so Oh, I, I don't know. We can't really take back our actions or anything. I mean, when you're referring to this whole thing of, like, you can go to the confessionary and you can tell the priest what you did and then it's absolved and you can move past it, you can move on. Maybe you just absolve yourself and then moving forward, right, whatever sort of virtuous thing you were trying to accomplish keeping this guy safe, encouraging him to be healthy, whatever it is that was your positive intention, continue to move forward with that positive intention. Right? Okay. Continue to, so, continue Lyle, to can move I ask forward. you a person? Sure, sure. Again, you know, I'm talking out of my ass a little bit here, but hit me. Oh, no, I, th- I think you're fine, and it kind of brings me to the question of is, how do we, like, we were talking about existential crisis issues. So how do we know, who is the real Lyle? We know you as Gek and Lyle, but who is Lyle to Lyle? Who is Lyle to Lyle? Um, oh, geez, I don't know. I'm a bunch of different things. Well, this is, I, this is what I was talking about last stream. Is like, I don't know if there is a real me. I mean, this is whatever you see on this Twitch stream. Uh, obviously is not what I act like or who I am 100% of the time, but it's no more real or fake than how I act when I'm alone. And how I act when I'm alone is no more real or fake than how I act when I'm meeting a new person for the first time and going, hello, how are you? You know, I, they're all just versions of the self. Unranked, complete animal. Is my version of the self... Is my version of the self, when I stepped on that scale, is that just in only my truth because no one else knows that I did that? Yeah, that's a version of who you are. I, I At least at least according to, you know, my um, 
haphazardly crafted philosophy of uh, the real selves and whatever. Yeah, that's a version of who you are. Yeah, all the bad, all the, the most terrible shit. You've not that that. You know, not that I'm judging that as terrible. I'm just saying this separately. But all the most terrible shit you've ever done is probably you. But also all the greatest stuff you've ever done, that's you too. They coexist in a weird, smelly bubble of, uh, you know, blood and farts that is a uh, human body and brain. So how do I go about going forward and making sure that I don't do something like this again? Because... Maybe not in this situation of weight. What if I see someone that is maybe, you know, not paying attention to the details or, for example, on their phone while they're flying. And then, you know, I kind of circumvene in another way that is maybe in the shadows like how I did before. Am I right to do that or am I not so moral authority to say what is good? Here's the last thing. I'll, here's the last thing I'll say about this is um, in those situations that you just mentioned. Look, your job. I don't know if you've told us explicitly what your job is, but you work in flying. You are in your classroom or whatever you call it with the flying guys, people. You are the safety authority. That's your job, is to keep people safe, right? So, like, that's your job in that whole uh, sphere is to keep people safe. So you don't have to do that shit in the shadows, right? If someone's on their phone while they should be paying attention to some flight shit, you can call them out on it. You can do whatever whatever you were going to do in the shadows. Just do it in the light. That's your job. You know, I wouldn't feel bad about that. All right. So I guess another version of myself is just the safety element and don't be in the shadows about it and just say, hey, he's too fat. It, look, if... You know, if he's too fat for him to fly safely, then fuck you, guy. You got to speak up. You got to be like, hey, he's too fat to fly safely. I don't, you know, you're not being an asshole. You're just trying to protect him from crashing a plane and dying. Thank you so much, Gag. I mean, I'm going to, I feel better now actually talking about. Are you still here, Kyle? Did you cut out? Yeah, I'm always here. I mean, the one thing that I love the most about it is, is, like you said, you take the authority, but be proud in the authority, but know what you're doing is just. And I think I've always just had conflicting feelings about what is just, because others might not see my reasoning for what is just. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, do you see it, though? Man, do you you've get given it? Me, you've, I mean, given like, me, you... you've given me much to you've given me much to think about, Alex. No, I don't know why I called you Alex. I'm, I'm terrible with names. Steve. You, I called another guy Alex today, and that was in his name. You've given me much to think about, Kyle. Um... You've given me much to think about, um, but I, I gotta I gotta get out of here before this gets too deep and before my head starts uh, sort of uh, uh, convulsing into some kind of black hole that uh, cannot be reversed. But um, you know, thank you for uh, for bringing this to light with us, and I uh, hope you have a good rest of the night, Kyle. Thank you, Lyle. Thank you for always being you. Beautiful. Thank you, man. Hello. Hey. Is this Jack? Yes, this is Jack. Jack, it says here that you exclusively sit down when you pee, and that you have a reason. Yes, why I do. That you would like to share with us. Yes, I, I, I would like to share this with you. I was not expecting it. I, I'm, I'm thrilled right now that I'm on call. So I just want you to know that. Thrilled to have. But um, you. yeah, I have a story behind that. I have a story behind that, and it is a, it is a traumatic one from when I was very young. Um, Because whenever I tell people I sit down to pee, they're like, why don't don't you stand up? It's like, you're a guy, you know? But, so when I was around uh, the age of three or five, it was like five, four or five, that age range, okay? You know how you're pretty short at that time, you know? Oh, when you're five years old? Child's pretty short. Yeah, a child is pretty I short at like five, yeah. Children Which, do, traditionally are very small, yes. Yes, so, um, well, I, uh, the, uh, I, I have this vivid memory of um, the toilet falling down, like the, the seat falling down on me. And um, there was blood. It was painful. And uh, I, uh, my penis was injured, to say the least that day and uh 
that is that is the reason for why I sit down to pee most of the time. The toilet pretty much seat exclusively. Fell off, fell, the, the 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 toilet seat fell onto your penis. Yes, when I was like three or five. Yes, like four or five. I mean, four or five age. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So, seat, all right. Which, so we've what, got we've got little Jack, and uh, you yeah. have the the toilet seat up. And, yes, toilet seat up. I'm um, king. You're a small guy, so like the, so so you're standing up, and the rim. Of yes, the I am standing seat up. I was very young. Is like so the rim of the. Yeah, something I don't is, remember. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, I'm hold sorry hold on. for. Yes. The the rim of the that. toilet seat, is. At exact, penis level. And and stop me stop me if I'm if I if I have it incorrect. But the rim of the to- you're, no, you're, you're so pretty short. correct so far. The your little penis is resting upon the rim of the toilet seat, and then the top two parts of the toilet, the 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 bowl that you sit on, and then sort of the lid come crashing down and crush your little penis. Yes, it was uh, it was bloody. It was really? bloody. This blood was How not bloody? red, How might I add. This blood was. It was. I I remember vividly remember there being. It wasn't like terrible, but there was there was quite a bit of blood, and it was not red, if I remember correctly. I do not remember this blood being red, or maybe my memory is completely wrong. But uh, that was the weirdest thing. I'm like, was that blood? Was that maybe? I I'm confused to this day what I saw. If I'm being completely honest, or if I if this is a child memory being incorrect, you know, because that is possible. And but so, I know for a fact this did happen. Okay, and so so is and so how old are you now? I'm 18. You're 18, and how old were you when this happened? Yeah. Did, like I said, I was about like four or five years old. I was very young. Four years. Okay, so this is thirteen years in the making. So for the for the for the following yes. thirteen years, you only sat down when you peed. I've had a few times where I stand up, but it's just I'm so used to sitting down at this point. I don't see the point to. I mean, obviously, I'll use a urinal if I'm at like a um, you know, what I mean, oh, okay, all right. Like so a urinal is different. But if I'm at if I'm specifically at a toilet, though, I will sit down. So this was my specific question. So, so this is not some form of medical issue. No, this well, is not a medical issue. This is not P. This is a a fear stemming from a traumatic event. <laughs> I mean, I'm not so much in fear anymore. I'm just lazy. I don't feel like aiming. <laughs> but for a By long way, time, this was a fear stemming from a traumatic experience. I sit down when I pee all the time because I also am lazy. And if you're telling me I get to sit. For like two minutes instead of staying. Yeah, I don't. I don't get why go there's. On my phone. I, there's so much. It seems like. It seems like there's so much like stigma against men sitting down to pee, and I think right. we need to get rid of that. Fully agree. Would you agree with me, Lyle? Sitting down. Fully agree with you. I think sitting down and peeing is the optimal strategy. You get to sit down, which is great, uh, and you get to go on your phone. And also, ev- yeah. almost every time I. P. Um, well, if I ever have a boner, I'll, I'll, I'll always sit down when I pee because you know if you pee yeah, it a boner, is a, it's a get, difficult. Like, like, you know, spl- splash. But even when I don't have a boner, I find myself getting spl- splashing everywhere, and I, I always, it, almost every time I, I stand up and when I pee, I, I'll pee a little bit on the on the rim, and then I will have to go get a little piece of toilet paper and then clean. Yeah, this, this is another uh, reason. The person that goes in I, um, next time is not like, hey, how come this guy peed all over the toilet seat? So I could skip that step. I would just sit down. Yeah, I, I like a man. I hate it when I'm at work because you'll see. Because whenever I work, I also see pee on the toilet sometimes, and it really I'm like, man, I just want to sit down. You know, gotta grab the toilet paper, grab the little like seat cover because I don't want to sit in someone's piss. And especially for me, I work. I work a 12-hour shift, and you think I want to stand up for that whenever I pee? No, I want to get a chance to rest. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, take your breaks when you can get. Your breaks, and then another thing with the workplace yeah, that, is that yeah. is that if you're in a small office and you leave a little bit of pee on the toilet seat, someone might know that that's you, 
And then you're the guy. Don't know. He pees on the toilet seat. You know Good thing I don't work at a small office. office. I'm just sitting down. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think... Um, yeah, that was... Uh, I also have a, another funny story of when I was younger. It's very short. I just crashed a golf cart when I was really young. Oh, sure. Can you tell into us a in tree. 15 seconds? Oh, yes. Very quickly. Uh, I just, like, hopped in a golf cart, crashed into a tree while my parents and stuff were fishing. I threw the keys in the water because to hide the evidence. That was six seconds. That was pretty good. Yeah. Well, I appreciate talking to you a while. It's been, it's been, I'm, I hope you enjoyed my traumatic story. Oh, were you, were you going to cut me off or no? I don't know. Oh, no, Jack, this was, this was, Jack, I get the sense that you're like wondering whether or not you're like doing an okay job at being on the phone right now. And I, I just want you to let you know that, um, this is perfectly fine. Well, I appreciate that. I actually don't, I mean, I'm not that stressed out right now, believe it or not. I, uh, because I'm kind of like you, uh, when I don't, like, if I don't have, like, that view, because I know you talk, because I've listened to your podcast a lot recently, that was why I called, because I've, I mean, I've known about you for, like, uh, a, a few months now, but I've, I've just more recently been getting into your work, and that's why I wanted to call in. Well, goddamn, thank you, Jack. I'm, uh, I really? Um, I'm glad that you've, uh, 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 I appreciate all the kind words, and uh, thank you for sharing your traumas with us, so that, um, yeah. you know, all of the six-year-olds that are listening to this podcast can be forewarned of the dangers of uh, peeing while standing up. Yeah. It's uh, it's, uh, it's scary when you're young. I'm, it's scary. Talk to you soon, Jack. Hello. Uh, oh. Hi. I'm getting, I'm getting kind of hungry. What are you craving? I don't know. I've been eating a lot of um I've been eating a lot of Asian food lately. Like uh I had sushi for the first time like 2 weeks ago. Like no, a, what, probably, yeah, like probably 2 weeks ago. So, uh, I've been eating a lot of sushi, ramen, Korean barbecue, Chinese food. I had udon for the first time. I don't know if it's the first time, but I had udon. That was pretty good. Um I could eat pizza. There's so many different kinds of food. I think you should DoorDash yourself something. Really? What, do you th- what should I DoorDash myself? The first thing you thought of you said Asian food. Yeah. Um, you know, it's enough about me. Diamond Tina, it says here you've been in a bunch of car accidents. One time even you crashed into your sister on purpose. Tell, tell me about that. Okay, so I was on, like, a probation with, like, the, like, driver's license, like, department, like, because when you get into, like, car accidents or you get speeding tickets and stuff like that in Utah, you get points, and if you get too many points, you can get your license taken away. Oh, I thought and you were so sick, I had gotten, oh, I wish, but I had gotten into a car accident, I had hit the back of someone's car, and I got... I don't remember how many points you get till you get your license taken away, but I was like one point away. And then I had got a speeding ticket. And so I had went way over the points and I was put on probation instead of getting my license taken away. And with that, I had to like not get any tickets for the whole year. And I was like three or four days away from getting off probation. And my sister had got pulled over and she was on the run, so she used my name and got a speeding ticket on my name. And my mom called me and she's like, hey, Marty just used your name and you got a ticket and everything like that. And I was really angry, so I went to my mom's house, because that's where my sister lived, and she wasn't there because my mom told her I was on my way. So... I just went and trashed her room because I was mad and I was leaving and I saw she was like hiding at the corner. And so I pulled up to her car and I said, hey, bitch. And then she ended up driving off. So I was just chasing her around and she ended up driving back to my mom's house. And at that point, I felt like the only way to kind of get back at her was to hit her car. So she stopped in front of my mom's house and I ended up just hitting the back of her car. And um, I just remember hearing my mom scream, 
what are you doing? And freaking out and everything like that. And I just felt so validated in that moment. So the revenge served its purpose in making you feel yeah. better about yourself. Kind of just, I feel like maybe about the situation, because I feel like my sister would always get into trouble, like, with crazy things, but always get away with it. Yeah. And, um... And she betrayed you. My she mom didn't your never... your name, which then got you in trouble. Yeah. And I, when I went to the police station to tell them, like, this was the wrong person, they were like, well, you need to bring her in so that we can make a report and everything like that. Hmm. And so, and so what is, my mom and, eventually and how, 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 how long ago was this? Oh, it was like last year. Okay, and what is your relationship like with your sister now? It's better. She She's not like doing crazy hooligan stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to hear that it's better. And you had gotten a lot of points on your license, you were telling me. What, what, what was it again that you said these points were from? So, like, if you, um, my first point I got was I accidentally crashed into the back of someone's car. And I think I got, like, 49 points for that. And I think you, at 50, you'll get your license taken away. So when I got my speeding ticket a little, like, a few months later or, like, five months later, um, that's when I was put on probation. What do you think it is that compels you to, to drive so recklessly? I don't know. I even one time was driving home from work and I was driving really fast. And like on these roads, it was kind of like farmland. So you like the roads were like super lonely and they were dotted so you can pass people on them. And I was passing my coworker and ended up like flying off the side of the road and totaled my car. Mm. I, it kind of sounds like the point but, system is working as it is intended to. Oh, definitely. But it's been a long time since I've crashed a car. Okay, so is but there ways to get better. points? Is there a way to get points um, removed or are points permanent? No, you can get them removed. So like after a year, I think like half of them come off and then you can take like um like a safety class kind of and then get the rest taken off. Okay. And are you working towards getting the rest of your points removed? I think they have, like, already all came off because that was, like, over two years ago. And I haven't done any... I've not pulled over anything since then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It says here you're only 21 years old. I'm 22. My birthday so, was um, on the 17th. Uh, so how long have you been driving for? Since I was 16. Since you were 16. Okay, so you've had a solid five years to rack up a cute amount of points. Yeah. And, okay, moving forward. So, all right, there's a lot of elements here that that I'm kind of interested in hearing about. There's the relationship with your sister, which you are telling me has been mended. Um... There's your reckless driving habits. Have you made active effort to start driving less recklessly after all these incidents? I feel like I feel like um, I wasn't intentionally trying to drive recklessly, but I feel like I don't speed as much anymore. I still yeah, do, good. just not excessively. Okay, that's good. That's good. Hmm. And your viewpoint on revenge, the fact that the revenge that you tell of in this story made you feel good, do you think that in the future you will continue to seek vengeance as heavily as you did in that one instance? Um, definitely not, just because um, there was just a lot more to that, like, a lot of more things that happened that caused that revenge. Like, my sister has even, like, burned, caught, like, the middle school we went to, she caught it on fire. Uh, she's went on high-speed chases. She's 
um, been with like stolen cars. And she just always seems to get away with those things. And my mom would never punish her either. So I feel like in my way, that was kind of me punishing her. So it was a bit of vigilante justice. Yes, for everybody. And your sister, you say, burnt down a middle school. Not like burnt it down, but there was like, um, they called it like the science hall. And she was like lighting the toilet paper on fire for some reason. And it just like caught the other roll on fire and then just the whole bathroom caught on fire. And what is it that is really, at the end of the day, fueling your desire to enact this vigilante justice? Is it a, and you say, you say it's for the good of everyone. So is this necessarily, does this have to do with some belief that you have in, in law and order? Does this have to do with, you know, I, I don't, I don't know, jealousy of your sister's ability to continually evade punishment? Does it have to do with a, a dislike of your sister? What is the driving force behind your desire to to restore balance as it seems you you feel as though you are doing I think I just wanted her to stop doing all that crazy stuff and just not like be a headache for everybody cuz like at that time my mom wasn't like really involved in our lives too much so like I would have to take her to court and take time to, to take her out to all these programs she had to do. So it was just like a pain that I didn't feel like doing anymore. And I just wanted her to pull her head out of her ass. Mm -hmm. Have you had an extended conversation with your sister aside from just hitting her car about your desire for her to pull her head out of her ass? Yeah, and that's why I'm saying now, like, our relationship's cool, because she finally did that. She started going to school and everything. Um, so, yeah, she's she's finally pulled her head out of her ass. But I don't think it's anything I've said to her or even me crashing into her car. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Is is there anything else that you want to say before we go, Tina? Um, well, I just want to say my real name is Dominique. I just said Diamond Tina because the last time I got in as a screener, I didn't get through. So I just wanted to have a eye grabbing name. But I also just wanted to say um, that I love your stream. I've been listening since like November or something. I saw you on TikTok, but and I figured that you would have a podcast on Spotify or something. So I was at work and I checked you out. And I've been listening since then. I'm almost all the way caught up. I have started with the old episodes and then worked my way up. But I love your stream. Me and my boyfriend watch it all the time. And I just wanted to say thanks for picking up the phone and talking to me and for doing what you do. Thank you very much, Dominique. I, I, I do really appreciate that. And uh, thank you for sharing your story with us. Have a good one, Gek. You as well. Bye. Therapy goes on.